Let's turn our Bibles to Genesis chapter 15, and this is the last teaching on vision, and I hope that you've been following the teaching because it's been very transformational. Someone told me, he said, Pastor Balaji, I mean, I, I thought I preached all the powerful messages all the time. He said, this vision ceremony got me. I said, oh, thank you, Jesus. At least something got you. All right. So, Genesis chapter 5, um, chapter 15. Let me answer just some very quick question. Let, let me, before I go to Genesis chapter 15, let me just answer a quick question. During this series, people have asked me this question and said something like this. They say, okay, you told us to write a five-year vision, and it says, well, I don't know how to write a vision. And this is what I will tell you. I know that, so this is a simple way to write a vision. Just think of when you're 70, what do you want to be? That's a simple way to write a vision. Just think of when you're 70 years old, what you want to be. So, and I will give you another help. So, someone says, I don't, I don't know how to write a vision, how to write a vision. Just think of the end, where you want to be. So, and when you think of the end, don't think of it together. Think of it in categories. So, I have like three categories of my life. So, I have, maybe I can split it for you and put it back together. I have three, I have several areas. So, when I'm 70, how do I want to be health-wise? When I'm 70, what do I want to be like financial-wise? How much do I want to be worth? When I'm 70... How do I want to be spiritual wise? When I'm 70, how do I want to be in terms of family? So the reason someone says, oh, do you, do, you, do you work on your diet? You work out? The reason why is that at 70, there's a mental picture I have that I have to work on now. So the picture I have at 70, I know how, what I want to look like. It affects now. Because now is the time to build for 70. Most of you come from families where there are disease. Like, dad has this, mom has this. And why some, it could be spiritual, a lot of those diseases are also tied to diet. So you need to be like, say, when I'm 70, I don't want to be like that way. I want to be this way. So for example, um, my office staff know me. If you give me documents that are too thin or tiny, I'm not going to read it. Because my intention is not to use glasses. So I'm not going to begin to stress my eyes. That's the truth. That, you know, me and my friend were talking, and I was having a chicken wrap, and um, he thought I was having a shawarma. And he said, oh, how can you be having a shawarma? Don't you know we're getting older? Because at a certain age, some food are not just great. If you're 15 and eat a pizza as a consistent diet, the Lord will help you. And I never say can eat once in a while, but as what? Consistent diet. So, how, so say, how do I get a vision? Think of what you want to be at 70. Let me give you some key areas. Number one, think of what you want to be health-wise. Think of what you want to be spiritual-wise. Think of what you want to be family-wise. So at 70, you want your, your, your children to be close to you. Are you playing with them right now? So when they become 30, is that when they'll be close to you? At 70, you know, I want to have my own house. What are you doing about your own house right now? So you think about that spiritually. You know, think about that, um, think about that spiritually. Think about career-wise. At 70, I want to be retired. Okay, good. If you're going to retire, what are you going to live on? Think about that um, in terms of finances. What do you want to have in terms of network at 70? At 70, most people have stopped working actively. People will be living off their investment. So if I'm living off my investment, what will my cost look like at 70? What can I do? Glory to God. So, so, so that's one way you want to look at your vision. So, so when you do that, so it's about eight it's areas. It's finance, it's rela- marriage, it's relationship, it's friends. At 70, what friends do I want to be close to me? I have to be them now because I can't be friends at 70. So I, I have to be those areas. The second thing that someone says, I have such a big vision. So let me just take it one by one. So at 70, I know what I want. So I begin to write those things down. And what I also do is that I categorize them. So because there are these eight, nine areas, I begin to put them together into categories. So I, I have three categories for me. First category is personal life. Second category is ministry. Third category is business and finance. So everything streams. The reason why is that when things are too much, it's, it could be very, very difficult to follow up. So when you bring them to categories, it's like three drawers. Everything is in the drawer. So the next thing you want to do when you do that is this. You're going to now say things like, um, this is very powerful. Why do I want this? Why is that important to ask why do I want this? Because if you don't know why, you will not sustain. Oh, yes, you wouldn't sustain. So the reason, I know the reason why I want to be a certain size when I'm 70. The reason why is that I want to be preaching the gospel all around the world. And I need a certain amount of energy which I cannot have in a certain size. With a very huge belly. I don't want to be going like this at 70. No, no, no. I need energy. I want to be like this, preaching the gospel, jumping. I want to be like that. So I need to build for now. 
I want to be able to get to my children's, my, my grandchildren's wedding and not use a walking stick. It's a dream that I have. I want to be able to talk to the leaders when I'm 70 in the 20s and we're wearing t-shirts and jeans and saying hallelujah and praise the Lord. I want to be able to do that. I want to be able to go on vacations and not someone needing to push me on a wheelchair. So the reason why is that if your why is not strong enough, you will not do it. And your why is your purpose. So it's, it's great to have a vision, but if your vision does not have a strong purpose, you won't do it. So, someone says, I want, I want. So, so, so for example, someone says, <laughs> see, the reason why I manage my finances well, well is that I know a lot of parents that were very rich when we were young, and as we grew older, I saw them become poor, so much so that now they depend on their children. I mean, it's nice for parents to give to their children, but children now depend on their parents. It's something complex. Because sometimes children can manipulate their parents' money. And some of you do that. But if you come, we'll give you the money. Praise the Lord. But you need to be free to do what you need to do. So you need to do that, break, break it down. And when you break it down, you need to ask yourself, what are the focus areas? And this is what it, because you can't do everything at once. What do I need to do now? What do I need to do tomorrow? So what do I need to do? For example, now, if you have this goal of business, maybe what you can do now is to start saving money. That's all you can do right now. Or start learning something. People always ask, when it's a vision, I have this big vision, where do I start from? Where's, where, where's my bottle? Where's my bottle? Yeah. I, I want to call someone, someone I'm familiar with. Okay, someone let's say. Okay, Obina, just come, you know, you know I'm going to call you already, so you, you're preparing for it already. I saw the way you were preparing for that. Obina is one of our pastoral leaders in the men's fellowship, so... Has a beautiful wife, Sulemi, and lovely people. The more you shake your head, the more I say more. They run a, they run a waste management, waste recycling plant. You want to shake your head so I say more? Okay, I, I know you'll be okay by now. So this is what I want to do. Just a simple thing, you know, do you granite? Sometimes or never? Never. Just a little. Okay, but I wanted to eat this granite. So, yeah, I want to eat it, yeah. I wanted to eat the granite. Yeah, eat. Go ahead and eat. Uh, you know I'm not poisoning you. Um, yeah, eat. Sure. Yeah, eat, eat, eat. Eat some more. Listen to me. If it continues, it will finish the bottle. But how does he eat it gradually? If you want to see your vision happen, this is the vision. How does he make it happen? Take it hand-sized bits at a time. Hand-sized bits at a time. The major problem with people that when you want to work on your vision, this is your vision. <laughs> you, want to, you want to put the whole thing in. The whole thing you want to put in your mouth at once. You're going to choke. Yes. That's why your life is feeling choking because you are putting too much at a time. If you want to make your vision, if this is your vision bottle, what do you do? Take a handful of vision at a time and you eat it. Then when you're done with that, you take another handful at a time. Then you what? Then you eat it. Then you take another handful at a time and you do what? And you eat it. That's all you do. So you talk to all these young people. What do you want to do? You say, Pastor, I want to start a crypto company. I want to start a tech company. I want to start this. In fact, how many? Say, someone, someone told me some, I met a young guy. The guy literally doesn't have in his whole life, his network doesn't have maybe up to two million. I said, How many? He said, Pastor, if I get 15 million, I know how to start from. Because it's never that way. Any vision you cannot start from small is a trap. Any vision you can't start small is a trap. You will not know you are trapped. You know, so, you, you want to start your hairdressing salon. Start from something small. Start making people's hair from their house to house. It's a big, th this is a big bottle of granite, but he's not going to eat it at once. He's going to eat handful, handful. You're going to check, like, wow. And let me tell you something. Some of you are so in a hurry. This is what I noticed. People that are in a hurry, eventually don't meet up with people that take it one step at a time. Thank you. Praise God. Thank you. Hallelujah. Can I? Yeah. All right, so, 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 so that's important. That's important. So you break into size. And let me tell you the reason I have to break into size. Why did I say handful? Once you break your vision into size, you will know what to do every month, every day, every year towards your vision. The way vision works is this. There's something you must be doing daily towards your vision to make it happen. 
That's how much you must break it down. So that vision must come into, what is a five-year plan, a one-year plan, a one-month plan, a quarter plan, and a daily plan. So today, maybe the only, so because it's not what I do in the, in the gigantic way. Maybe the thing I have to do today about the vision is to find out who knows somebody else. That's all I do today. Tomorrow is to what? Is to send the person an email. That's all I do tomorrow. Next tomorrow is to what? Is to resend the person a reminder. That's all I do next tomorrow. Glory to God. I said glory to God. I said glory to God. All right. So let's get into, let, let's get deeper now. Genesis chapter 15. You know, I, I just want to pull that there because we spend a lot of time worshiping. So in case, in case, Genesis chapter 15, verse 2. So if I have a vision and my vision has died or my vision is stalling, what do I do? I hope you realize that vision is so powerful because vision releases potentials. I say vision does what? Releases potentials. I'm going to give another example. Vision does what? Releases potentials. See, you don't know what you can do until you have a vision. Uh, let me give an example. Where's my paint? Is the paint here or there? Where's the paint? Can I, can I get the paint? Help me get the paint. Thank you. Yeah, give me the paint. I, I thought I would have it on this side to make it easy for me. Thank you. Can I get the, can I get the board also? Because this is very easy for all of us. Let me get the paint. Let me get the board. And, and, let, and let me get, you know, I, I don't know what to call now. Suggest someone. J yeah, you just put it. Exactly. Just put the paint at the board here. So this is just paint. This is just paint. Chinedu, come. come. Come and paint. Paint as, yeah. Yeah, come, come. You're looking at, if it's your own Chinedu or the other one. It's your Chinedu. Come and paint. See. This is paint. This is just paint. This paint has potentials. But what will bring out the potential of the paint is vision. Come, sir. Here's the brush. Here's the paint. Just paint. Paint whatever you want on the board. Paint however you, des you desire. What is it? You don't know what you're painting. Just the yeah, just, you're just following the ball. Okay, that, that's fine. Okay, but what I did is, thank you. What I did was to get a speed painter. And I asked him, my brother, come. While I'm preaching, he's going to be on this side. Don't look at him. Just paint. And he's going to take the same paint, the same brush, unless he was going to do with it. Go ahead, sir. Yeah, go ahead and paint. So we can keep reading the Bible. Leave him alone. Genesis 15, verse 1. The Bible says, after, the thi after these things, the word of God came to Abraham in a vision, saying, Fear not, Abraham, I am your shield and your exceedingly great reward. And Abraham said, Lord, Lord God, will you give me, will you, sorry, what will thou give me, seeing I go childless? Remember, Abraham already had the vision that was going to have a child. Yes or no? Yes, sir. yes or no? Yes, sir. But because the vision has stayed now over 20 years, he was becoming disillusioned. I'm saying so because when you have a vision, sometimes it can be very challenging to have that vision. It can take a long time. So Abraham was saying that, hey, because I go childless, see what the Bible says. And Abraham said in verse 3, Behold to me, thou hast given no seed, and lo, one in my house is my hair. And behold, the word of the Lord came to him. You know, so, so this was what Abraham was saying. Abraham was saying, Lord, maybe it's time we forget our vision. Because I have no seed and saw us in my in a servant in my house as an heir. And what Abraham was saying was very powerful. This is really powerful because sometimes people give up on their vision because they have an alternative. Abraham says, Well, I don't have a child, but my servant has a child. That's what Abraham was saying. People give up on their vision because they have an alternative. Listen to me. Some of you, the problem is not the vision, it's the fact that you have alternatives. You have rich parents. You have a great job. You have another passport. You can relocate to um, Japan. You can move somewhere. You give up on your vision. And what did God do? Because there are people under the sound of my voice today. That's a vision you have for your company. That's a vision you have for your marriage. That's a vision you have for your job. And you are, it's dead. It, it's really dead. And why is it dead? It's really dead because, number one, now you have alternatives. Number two, because you became frustrated. You worked so hard towards it and it's failed. 
Number three, it, it, you, know, you know, there were just huge challenges on the way. So, number four, you were just afraid that it's not going to work out again. And you gave up on the vision. What do you do? See, when Abraham gave up on the vision, I want you to see how God brought back Abraham's vision. That's what I want to see. Because today, dead visions are going to come back to life. Someone say amen. amen. Today, dead visions are going to come back to life. Someone say amen. amen. Glory to God. Remember our first line in teaching. I said vision releases what? Potentials. That what you can do is dependent on the vision you have. And I give that man a brush and I give him paint. And I say paint something. But because there was no vision, he said, I couldn't do something. This guy has a vision now. See what this guy painted. Does it look familiar? Did you notice that he had the same brush and paint that the guy had? It was this same brush. Can I, can I get the brush? It was this same brush the guy had. It was the same paint the guy had. But why did he produce something different? Vision brings up potentials. The question is not where you're from. The question is not where you live. It's what you can do with what you have. Did you notice when the guy first came, he even messed up it and painted everything? And you know you can't see all the things he painted because vision is so powerful, your thought can turn into designs. Oh, wow. Vision is so powerful that your faults can turn into design. And, and I'm saying so because some people feel as if I've made terrible mistake. Vision is so powerful, your faults can turn into designs. Glory to God. So as long as you keep seeing this drawing, I want to remember that. That vision, vision is so powerful because many of you, listen, your life needs to change. But what is going to change your life you say you need motivation. Listen to me. Listen, the most successful in the world do not use motivation. They are disciplined. And they are disciplined because they have vision. The most successful people don't care about motivation. It's that they just understand, for me to have what I want, this one needs to get done. Why do you need someone to motivate you? Because the vision is not compelling. Glory to God. That's why, have you noticed something? The people that I see lose drastic weights amongst my friends are people that have health issues and doctor warned them. You know why? They were not motivated. They were given a vision that if you live like this, you will die. If you live like this, you will live long. It was not motivation. They wake up and say, I don't want to die. I'm going to exercise. Because most of you are looking for motivation. What you need is a compelling vision for your life. Bishop, Bishop Boyedipo was asked a question. They said, Bishop, what keeps you awake? Do you take coffee to stay awake because of the long hours you work? He said, what do you drink to stay awake? Bishop looked and laughed. He said, I drink responsibility. He says, when you take responsibility, you'll be awake. All of you that are single, so you spend your money anyhow. Because you don't know something, some th there are some phenomenons that might be contend with. It's called school fees. When you're married, you can spend any hour, but when it's school fees period, you will see the married man and married man become very, they become very careful. Like, oh yeah, next month, September, the kids are going to school. And some of you have four children in very good schools. You know what that means? It's, called, it's not motivational. It's that you have vision. The other day, I saw one of these um, Hollywood stars, and I said, oh wow, I, you've maintained your size. He said, Pastor, I don't want to maintain my size. He said, all the things I have to do to keep remain sleep because this is my industry. I must remain a certain size. He said, so my eating, my exercise, is it I, if I want to be relevant, I must remain a certain size. That's the power of vision. That's the power of vision. So when people see you get up every morning doing next level prayer, you're not stupid. You don't have any motivation. You know what you want. So you stay on it. You stay on it. You stay on it. Because you know what you want. Glory to God. So let's flip back. So the Bible says that Abraham said in verse 3 that, you know, I'm not going to have a child. Son is born in my house and all of those things. See what God did to help Abraham bring back the vision. The Bible says, and behold, the word of the Lord came unto him saying, this shall not be the heir. But he that shall come out of thy lungs shall be thy heir. The first thing God did was to bring in to bring back what he told him. 
So many of you, how God will bring back your dead vision is to remind you of what you saw initially. It's to remind you of what you saw. And let me tell you something. It's possible that your vision can get blurry. How do I know that? A man couldn't see. Just Christ laid hands on him. And just Christ said, what can you see? He said, I see men as trees. Just Christ said, come. He said, you need a second touch. When just Christ touched him again, he began to see men as human beings. Many of you, over time, because of situations and circumstances, your vision has become very blurry. Now you see men as trees. And what God needs to do is to touch you again so you can see again. Someone say hallelujah. All right, let's keep reading now. The Bible says this, and this is what he did, verse 5. And he brought him forth and said, look, look now towards heaven and tell the stars or count the stars. And if you are able to number them, he said, so shall your seed be. So what God did was this. God says, you are losing picture of the future. Let's help you. Get into a position where you begin to visualize. He said, begin to count the, skies, the stars in the sky. If you can count them, so shall your seed be. One of the things you really want to do is this. When your vision is dead, it's the first thing is to remind yourself of what you dreamt about initially. Maybe you're going through a season where you want to get a divorce. You need to remind yourself, why in the first place did I get married? There was a purpose. Why did I choose this person? Maybe you're trying to start a business and raising capital is very difficult. You have to go back and ask yourself again, why exactly did I do this? You want to ask yourself, why exactly did I do this? This is very important to you. Maybe you're running a, a business and you have some challenges. Why am I doing this? For example, even when it comes to church, if you don't remind yourself why you come to church, you will stop coming. Why am I doing this? And when you do it, you begin to visualize. You begin to visualize. The reason why is this. Most vision gets stuck because the vision carriers don't believe in the vision again. And they don't believe in the vision again because the vision becomes blurry. Let, 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 let's show you something here. First Kings chapter... First Kings... First Kings chapter 17 verse 8. First Kings chapter 17, verse 8. The Bible says, And the word of the Lord came to him, the prophet, saying, Arise, get thee to Zarephath, which belonged to Sidon, and dwell there. Behold, I've commanded a widow woman there to sustain thee. See what God said. God did not say, Go and beg the widow woman. He said, I've already spoken to the widow woman to do what? To sustain you. Now, the widow woman had received a vision from God on sustaining the prophet. See what the Bible says. The Bible says, he arose and went to Zarephath. And when he was come to the gates of the city, behold, the widow woman was there gathering of her sticks. And he commanded to her and said, fetch me, I pray thee, a little water and a vessel that I may drink. And as she was going to fetch it, the woman already knew what she should do. Not that she didn't know, she knew what she should do. The Bible says, as she was going to fetch it, he called unto her and said, bring me. A morsel of bread in your hands. And she said, look at what she said. As the Lord liveth, she will use the name of God. I have not a cake or an handful of meal in barrel. A little oil in the cruise. And behold, I'm gathering two sticks that I may go in, dress it for me and my son. That we may eat and what? That we may eat and what? The vision the woman was kind was the vision of death. That we are going to eat and die. What did Elijah do? Elijah said, for me to help them, I have to change the vision of death. What did he do? Look at the next line. He said to him, and, and Elijah said, fear not, because that's where it starts from. Because many of you, the reason why you have not taken a step is fear. Because there's a step fear. It, and you're carrying a vision of death. Let me say something to you. The degree to which you believe in your vision will determine the results of your vision. You know why? The degree to which you believe in your vision will determine how much you can invest in your vision. A, to determine how much you can invest in your vision. And until you invest massively, you can't see massive results. So, you know, so Elijah, and what is holding you back? For example, there are people here now, you are doing so where your next step is to get a store in VI. Now, next step is to open an office in Abuja. Your next step is to tell that girl, I love you, I'd love to marry you. But you cannot step forward. You know why I can't step forward? The reason why you're stuck is because the vision you see is vision of death. The reason why you have not taken the step is that because you believe it will fail more than succeed. Are you understand what I'm saying? That's the truth. 
Why have you not taken the step? Because deep down in you, you think that if I take the step, it will lead more towards failure than towards success. That's the reason why you cannot do the investment. That's the reason why you cannot start the business. That's why you can't do the change of career. That's why you can't do that thing. The reason is simple. It's just within you that if I take the step, and until that vision changes, you will not be able to do anything else. Are you here, somebody? You think about it. What is holding me back? Many of you are here. You know exactly what to do to grow. Yes or no? Yeah, you're not the next thing to do. Why can't you take a step? The reason why I can't take a step is this. Because you believe that if I take that step, instead of growing, I will amount to failure. There's that fear. There's that uncertainty. There's that thing inside you. And until you deal with that fear, you will not find yourself going somewhere. So the woman came and said, God had already told her, when the prophet come, feed the prophet. When Elijah showed up on the scene, she said, let me tell you, sir, all we're going to do is to eat this meal and we're going to die. Elijah said, the more she thinks about death, she cannot take an action. Let's change the picture. What did Elijah say to her? Elijah said unto her, fear not, because it dealt with the roots. He said, fear not. Do as thou had said, but make me first a little cake of... Um, Make me a little cake first and bring it to me and afterward make for, thy, make for thee and for thy son. Let me say something quickly here. Elijah said, let's change it. And it said, in, let me just read it quickly. So we, we don't go back. For thus said the Lord, the barren, let's talk about a new vision. He said, for thus said the Lord, the barren of meal shall not waste. That means it will not run empty. Neither shall the cruise of oil finish. Until the day that the Lord sent all what sent rain upon the earth, what Elijah did was to change the vision. The reason why a lot of people are stuck with the vision is this they really believe that taking steps in their vision will lead to failure. And I'm saying to you in this service, this is what I'm saying to you if you're going to take the step, you are going to have to change the vision, you are going to have to change what you see, you are going to have to change what you believe. One thing you must know is this. The people that have manifestation or actualization of their vision. Should I tell you something? Before it happened, they had a high level of certainty to happen. Yes or no? Yes, sir. That's it. That's what you need to have. Before, I'm telling you, because some of you right now, the stage of your business, you have to open an office in Dubai. You have to open an office in Abuja. You have to get some things. You have to employ some expatriates. And you're afraid of taking that step. And you're wondering, what else will I do? And the reason why you're afraid is this. Because in your mind, all you can see is doom and death. That's why you're afraid. All you can see is doom and death. And let me tell you something. Some people will even take the action out of fear. And when they take it, it will backfire. And when it backfires, they will now say, I need it longer to walk. It's now become a case of what? A self-fulfilling prophecy. Because what they do is that, you know, they knew they've been afraid. They're not saying, let me try something small. But that's the thing. The way this thing works, it doesn't try with something small. You have to deploy massively. And guess what? There's nothing that brings confidence that re like results. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Because what you need is the confidence to step out. But how are you going to step out if you're afraid of stepping out? Because it's in stepping out that you get results that makes you more confident to get results. I'll give you my own story. <laughs> When I began to pray for the sick, the first time I prayed for someone that was sick was 94, 93, something like that. I can't remember again, 1994. I had a word of knowledge. I just, well, I said, the Lord said there's someone here that had 13 year old asthma, that the asthma was 13 years old. I could not tell the person to raise up the hand or stand up because I was afraid that, what about if I was hearing nonsense? So I just said, after the service, if you had the person, please walk up to me and let me know. So the guy came, just a young guy, came and said, and the person. You know what I did? I just hugged him. He wondered why I hugged him. Because it was not about praying for him. It was the fact that I was hearing something. <laughs> Are you hearing me? It was the fact that I was hearing something. I was encouraged. I began to pray for him. But after that time, I now began to say, there's someone here. How did I get that from? I got that from what? From the example of the past. Many of you, what you need to achieve your vision is confidence. But you cannot have confidence without results. Are you here? And that's why mentoring is very powerful. That's why, you know why? Because sometimes mentoring will get you to push you and help you with the mindset. 
And how do you develop confidence? This is how you develop confidence. This is the Bible way. The Bible says, God began to talk to Elijah. He said, began to see, visualize, confess, visualize, confess, visualize, confess. What do you do? Whatever you want to believe, the, if you say it for long enough, guess what? Your mind will accept it as true. I'll give an example. I want to watch a movie recently with someone. Uh, I mean, uh, no, not, not, not recently. It was, it was watch a movie at home. In fact, my wife does it all the time. And when they are shooting the movie, literally I shake on the chair. I go like, go like this. I go like, so one day, I didn't know it was that intense. So my wife was looking at me. We're like, <laughs> so my wife tapped somebody. said, look at So they look at me. We're like, I'm like, okay. And I said, what is wrong? Are you the one playing? <laughs> Are you in the movie? I said, leave me alone. This is, thing is so very intense right now. You know, and I was shaking. And you know the thing? Just a simple principle. The human mind cannot decipher between friction and reality. What does that mean? If you begin to visualize what you want to see, the human mind will think it's real. It will now give you the steps to make it real. And you'll have that result. Praise the Lord. The human mind cannot decipher. So if you begin to, so God told, so let me tell you something, eh? God told Abraham, be counting, be naming your children, Isaac, Jacob, be naming them. The human mind could not tell. Either it was that he was counting, or were the children. As soon as that happened, he got pregnant. Be learned to interact with the results you want without seeing them. These are deep concepts, though. You'll be interacting with the results. You'd really, you know, and when our church was very small, 200, I, I picked up a piece of paper, and I wrote on paper, first service, second service, third service, fourth service, and I was writing numbers, writing numbers, writing numbers, adding total result, total result, total result, total result. One day, someone walked in and said, what is, what is this, sir? I said, well, I'm just exercising my mind. Can you arrest me for writing? No. But one day, one day, I brought out that paper, and I looked at what I'd written, everything that happened. Amen. Glory to God. Hallelujah. I'm telling you, when I was single, I visualized my marriage. I said, God knows, my marriage will end in profit. I'm not going to look for a loan, neither am I going to be paying debt afterwards. It's going to end in profit. When I married, my marriage ended in profit. So it was not after marriage, you're not saying, ah, we're trying to balance cake, we're trying to balance honeymoon. Mm -mm. My marriage ended up in profit. When I was saying, about the time I was going to marry, I, I was staying on the mainland. I was going, I think that bank was called Bank PhD then. They gave them this, this car just came at that time. It's called, this Honda Accord. There was this new shape. I don't know what they call it now. There was this new shape that come out. And I was just going to eat in a restaurant. The restaurant's name was Magrelos. I was going to eat in that restaurant, and I just looked at the car and said, wow, I like this car. You know what I did? I just went and caught the picture of the car and put it on the door of my office. Few months after, someone called me and said, meet me in this car lot. I said, okay. He said, pick any car you want. And right beside me was that car that I wanted. I said, this is it. The reason why is this. Once your mind can take it, your life will attract it. See, the biggest change to transformation is from within. Glory to God. I'm telling you, it's from within. I, 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 can keep, I mean, there was this powerful story I heard, and this story was about basketballers. They've done very bad in basketball. This team has done very bad in basketball. Their coach called them and divided them into two. He wanted to teach them something. Every day, he told one, the team A of the two basketball team, he said, be throwing balls into the net. Be practicing every day so that you can get better. The other two, he said, don't practice. Come into the field, sit down. Just be imagining yourself dunking the ball. Imagine yourself dunking the ball. Imagine yourself dunking the ball. After about six weeks, either six or six months, they gathered them together. Guess the people that did better? Not people bouncing the ball. The people that were what? Imagine themselves dumping the ball. Why? As a man... Think it in his heart, so is he. If you move in your heart, your word will move. Someone says, I can't make it this country. That's why you cannot. Someone says, there's nobody to marry in this country. That's why you're not married. 
So the first thing you have to do, this is, this is the first thing. So my vision is dead. How do you make... So the reason why your vision is dead is this, because you actually killed your vision by not believing in it. So how do you bring it back? By believing it can happen. How do you believe it can happen? By changing the way you think, by changing the way you talk, by changing what you see. Glory to God. I said glory to God. I said glory to God. I said glory to God. Let me close with this. Because this is the last teaching, so I'm just trying to put everything in the plan. Someone says, well, I have a vision. How do you deal with obstacles in your vision? And I said something. Obstacles on any vision path is common to all visionaires. Both those that feel that... See... Obstacle is why people fail in their vision. Obstacle is why people succeeded. Hope you realize that. So the obstacles are never the problem. It's the way you see that is the problem. I'll give an example. Some companies will never become who they are today, if not for obstacles. That's the truth. I was telling them about the story about Lamborghini and Ferrari. I, I saw it on, on, um, on Instagram. That how did Lamborghini start? There was a man that was wealthy, had a tractor company, but knew about cars. He went to meet the Ferrari owner and be like, well, your cars are good. He drove one and had Ferraris. He said, but there's this problem with the Ferraris. And the guy you know, kind of said, you're saying nonsense. You know, you're saying rubbish. Don't talk to me. And the guy was so upset because it was legitimate fault that the Ferrari had. And other people had complained. So his name was actually Lamborghini. So he now went to start what? Another brand fixed the Ferrari problem in his own car and called it Lamborghini. And now Lamborghini is there. See, what you must know is this. And this is, you know, I'm just saying this because I really want to be practical. When you have a vision, you're going to have challenges. But in the challenges is a perspective. That challenge can be a resource. And let me, let me help you with some things in the Bible. Look at Paul. Paul spent the latter of his life in jail. Yes or no? Was that a problem? Was that a blessing or a curse? What? Listen to me. If you looked at it somehow, you see that was a curse. That was the biggest blessing. You know why? All the epistles we wrote today, it was in prison that Paul wrote it. When he had time to be traveling up and down, he couldn't write. It was when he couldn't write that he now began to write epistles. Which is more impactful when he was going from one city to the other or when he was in prison? It was an opportunity. Just imagine how I'm sure when Paul was alive, it physically did not impact more than one million people. But today, the writings of Paul have impacted billions of people all across the world. People are bearing the name Paul because he was put in prison. When he was in prison, he might have looked at it as if, what am I doing here? He didn't know that God made him in a confined space so that he can write. So that when he's dead, generations after can see it. Are you here? I said, are you here? Look at Lazarus. When Lazarus was sick, God said, this sickness is not unto death. You know why? Why did he say so? He said, but for the glory of God, if he was sick, people would not know that's a miracle. But when he died, and he died for fourth day, you know why, why fourth day was, it was important? Because the body would start decaying from the third or fourth day. So there was no way, listen to me, and he was not just dead, they embalmed him. You know what that means? They put him, have you watched Egyptian money before? When they put that thing on them, that means that even if he was not dead before, by the reason of the embalming, it will kill him. It will be, it will be suffocated. He will be suffocated. There's no way. He will be suffocated. I glory to God. I am okay. Very powerful. I'm just thinking of scripture just arranging in my head. Think about this. When Lazarus came out of the embalming, just Christ said, lose him and let him go. Meaning, cut the what? The POP out. When Jesus Christ rose from the dead, they didn't say he should cut it. What did the Bible say? The Bible says that they found the embalm arranged and kept. <laughs> Let me explain what that means. When Jesus rose from the dead, he rose with a celestial body. Body that transcends matter. So when he rose from the dead, he just came out of the embalmment. And the embalmment collapsed. They didn't need to cut it for him. He just simply, he wasn't, he just came back into his body, but his body had changed. He just came out of it and the embalmment collapsed. So they didn't just have cut it. 
So that's why it, when, it, when it collapsed, Jesus was not in a hurry. He took it, folded it for them, and arranged it. When the Jews saw it, they knew he raised from the dead. Because there was no way you could have come out of that thing like that without being raised from the dead. Are you here, somebody? Are you here, somebody? Glory to God. I said, glory to God. I said, glory to God. I said, glory to God. So, let's close this now. So, where I'm closing this is this. When Lazarus was sick, if he got healed, it would have not been a big miracle. But guess what? When he died and decayed, it became a bigger miracle. What you think is an obstacle is your biggest opportunity for expansion. Someone says, um, I have no capital. I know someone that he was trying to do a business and he saw the hustle around capital in Nigeria and he says, wow, I never even realized that the business I wanted to do was nice, but the bigger problem was funding. He said, as soon as I noticed it, I moved into the funding space. He said, I've even made more money from the funding space than my original business. Just because he had trained himself to see what obstacles as opportunities. So you are here. I mean, it, it, you can't believe it. COVID, you know if I've become rich through COVID? All these um, COVID centers, who owns them? Everybody pay 50000 to do tests. Some people have become rich overnight. Glory to God. This is very powerful. One of the prayers we have to pray today is this. God, help my mindset to see ob ob obstacles as what? Opportunities. And what does God do? Very powerful things God did. What does God do? God puts you in a situation where, and that's why for the woman, the woman, he told the woman, he told the woman, when the prophet come, give him to feed. God was trying to move her mind from what? Problem into opportunity. He was trying to, that, see, if you're giving Christian, that's one of the things that happens when you're tight. You move from the person that is not enough and scarcity mentality into the fact that it's enough, it's overflowing, I can give, I can tight because of how I'm thinking. Glory to God. Hallelujah. I say hallelujah. hallelujah. Let's stand up and pray.